So a bit of a background um, on connectedness of the world, which is probably um, all well known. I suppose the current environment of increasing connectedness between all people on Earth um, has evolved, evolved rapidly. Um, so traditional media um, in the form of newspaper and print, um, I suppose progressed TV radios from the 1920s to the 70s. Um, this developed to digital media in the form of computers um, and internet chat rooms through the 70s to the 2000s, um, where I suppose social media, where I suppose had their infancy and starts in those chat rooms. Um, and now they've taken hold and explode with the developing mobile technology that we all have with the likes of tablets and smartphones. Um, I suppose just a bit of a pace of innovation, how, how it's all taking off in innovation in general. So, um, and then as we now connect, um, a large and growing percentage of the population is now connected through social media um, and these online platforms such as MySpace, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and probably one of the bigger ones, Facebook. So it's a bit of a, a graph I found so showing that in 2010 there wasn't even a billion people connected on social media um, and it's expected in 2021 that there'll be over 3 billion people worldwide connected on social media. So with this technology, we now have the ability to instantly take and share images, thoughts, um, with a lot, uh, sorry, lost my spot, images and thoughts, um, plus access the images and thoughts of others um, and search all the online information that the internet has at our fingertips on the spot. Um, I suppose not, it's not just confined to the younger generation. Um, you're finding now that a lot of grandparents and mums and dads um, are connected now as, as the generations connect right through on social media. Um, these technologies just add to the whirlwind of opportunities of instant, instantaneous media transfer. Um, so news travels fast, swiftly, um, at increasing viral speed. So it, it just adds to the fast-paced society we live in, um, where values, opinions develop rapidly, answers are sought instantly, and everyone's patience is dwindling. So I noticed that on the weekend in Adelaide, that and no one can drive without tooting a horn, so just have to get everywhere instantly. So just a bit of a, there's the grandma and grandpa checking out. <laughs> They're getting more savvy than that though these days, that's for sure. <laughs> so where does this lead us? I, I think this leads us um, into many opportunities um, within the horticulture industry. Um, as we've heard today, it's pretty, pretty much along the lines of a lot of our speakers have, have talked today, um, we now have the opportunity to gain the insights and thoughts and needs of, and desires of our customers using the connected world. Um, they are our customers, and as in re any retail business, the customer is always right. Sometimes, as a grower, the customer's demands seem a little bit ridiculous, ill-informed, but... And, and sometimes unachievable, but from their point of view, they are the buyers of our produce, and from my point of view as a grower, I need to listen to what they're saying um, and then look forward to the opportunity of producing what they want and be grateful that they value um, my produce and pay their hard-earned money for it. Bill Gates quote there, just saying our most unhappy customers, as frustrated as you might feel with, with, with the customers as a grower sometimes, um, are still your greatest source of learning. So they have a point, you've got to listen to it, um, whether it's what you want to hear or not. So, and I suppose we're finding in our business it's easier than convincing all our customers just to accept the product the way it is, um, then than to pay for a, something that doesn't fit their expectations. So we, we, I think we are better off looking at what the customer wants and rather than trying to mould them into what we want to produce for them, try and look at what opportunities there are to produce what they want. So, so social media allows, also allows us a wonderful opportunity as growers to display our hard work, care, um, taken in producing our wonderful produce. 
Plus, it also allows us to survey customers' needs, wants and opinions. In our case, we had feedback um, from the roadside stall and various friends in our property that the taste of our fruit straight off the tree was like nothing they could get in the supermarkets. So with that in mind and a little bit of research, um, we started a business fresh which was direct in 2010. We used the postal system to deliver oranges straight from our orchard to our customers, which were everyday people's doorstep, aiming to shorten the conventional timeline from harvest to the consumer, delivering superior freshness and taste. I suppose that was our point of difference to the general supermarket, um, I suppose supply chain of getting a fruit. We, we aimed to shorten that as short as, we could, as short as we could to get that fresh taste across. I suppose initially we set up a website and an online shop and utilised email, social media um, to connect with our customers and connect them with the production cycle in the orchard. Um, customers and interested onlookers could all engage in dialogue direct with us and we could discuss the virtues of what we were doing in the field at the time. So information flowed two ways. It gave us the opportunity to survey the connected customers that we had on our social media sites and our, and our email lists, um, whether they liked their produce a certain way. And this ultimately helped us to find our product range and target quality. And I suppose ultimately this allowed us to direct investment in our business um, to where it would have greatest effect. So on the grounds for us, we found that taste was was um, the feedback on taste was really good and really positive, but selling blemish fruit was hard. There was some feedback that there was too much blemish on our fruit um, and there was some size variation. So we invested pretty hard in putting a full cover netting structure over parts of our orchard to take out wind, um, wind the wind effect, which caused a lot of blemish in our fruit and also up our intensity in pruning and thinning on the ground. And this will deliver positive gains to our business um, thanks to happy customers. So we used email to directly connect to customers. This allowed us flexibility to connect to one or all on our mailing list. And at, that, and at a time, a lot of the older generation weren't really onto the social media yet, so we did rely on email a lot in the early stages. But then as Facebook took off, we, had, we um, ran a Facebook, I suppose, blog and page along with that to help our growers connect with us again. So that's just an example of our Facebook page and our opening to the season in 2016. Um, we also use other, I suppose, tools, social media tools and, and platforms on the computer, um, such as MailChimp was one we used. Um, you can use that to manage your mailing list to deliver, in our case, seasonal updates. Um, and we also use it to draw up, draw up certain surveys throughout the season. If we had an idea of a new product we wanted to, to put out there or um, just to get a feel of what the customers were thinking and feeling, we could draw a survey out with MailChimp and survey the results and then apply that to our, to our service. I suppose with social media and the increasing connectedness of everyone, the opportunities have been seen by the marketers and the money makers. So marketing and advertising is now an increasing part of social media and the internet. Um, and for us, we used it to be very targeted in our, in our, in our marketing campaigns, um, advertising our products. Inherently, a lot of information is gathered by the social media platforms on the user. But when you sign up, you generally got your age, your gender, um, demographics of where you live. So advertising online through Facebook and the likes, provides easy analysis of our advertisement, who it's going to, allows us to target specific demographics, um, and then it also allows us to survey the results of our reach, which allowed us to be, I suppose, ultimately directed with our investment money um, in advertising. So just a, like a Google Analytics, um, I suppose, analysis of a, of a Facebook ad you reach percentage of male, female, age groups, it can be broken down further, but it, it became a really valuable tool for our business um, in trying to direct 
where we would fund our investment in marketing and also our advertisement um, and I suppose where we wanted to get our products to. Um, I suppose it was a valuable learning experience for our business and we no longer continue the fresh fruit delivery business um, for various reasons. Um, which I can, I'll go into later maybe. Um, but we've learnt many lessons along the way which we still use in our business to sell online other products and to try and innovate and become sharers of information and better growers. So our latest venture is a, a lemon cooler. So that's, we've used our lessons learnt over the last 10 years in it to, to I suppose, move, move on with that. The fresh fruit game for us I suppose as a recent um, out of the industry too with Aussie Farmers Direct, we found that we were still competing pretty hard with supermarkets um, and for our business we really needed to grow it massively to make it sustainable, economic and to get the cost down so we had to sort of work out which point we were going to either invest and go further into it or concentrate on being good growers and putting our um, fruit into other markets. I suppose industry implications. Um, to know what the customer's thinking and feeling is valuable information to have. Allowing industry to tailor their products to match expectations. This also, the, this flow on, this will flow on to increased value and sales and direct investment in the right areas. As primary producers, there's an opportunity to create our story in the supply chain. Whether we market direct ourselves or supply fruit to a packer or agents. How the produce is grown and how we are farming to meet the consumer's criteria is a highly valued link in the chain. Um, I feel consumer values this quite highly. Um, I suppose from my perspective, I think it's probably more highly valued than some of the post-harvest um, links in the chain. So us as growers have a, a really important role to feed that information into the supply chain through the connected webs and stuff and was the block diagrams or whatever we had earlier and gear like that to try and um, give our consumers confidence at the end. I still think... We'll get back on. I suppose as instantaneous as the connected world is, it still takes some coordination and time to feed this information into the ether and wash over the customers. I think we need to avoid it becoming a bombardment of information um, that becomes easily confusing and easily forgotten and ultimately may miss the mark. Therefore, I feel there needs to be some industry, supply chain, um, unity and direction in this message. And I think it's also important to have a brand on the end to align all this information up with. Um, I think it's just every grower gets on there and then has their own little story, it can become quite messy. I think having industry involvement and direction of this um, would be the key to making it work um, and, and reaching the customers. So we need this brand on the end. So once this information has infiltrated the potential customer, the brand becomes an easily recognisable tag at the supermarket um, or on the online shop giving the consumer subliminal confidence because, I suppose, of the connected social media and advertising that we've, we've put into the system, that this brand's going to deliver their quality, taste and ethics expectations of the product. So, concluding, I think consumers like to connect with a paddock to plate mentality um, the paddock to, pl to plate um, mentality or th theory. Um, where am I? And connect with their journey of the food. That, for them, gives them confidence in what they're eating and that their hard-earned money is going back um, to, where, to, to the farmers and the value chain through the system. Using the available web-based social media platforms not only allows them to connect with the brand but also to follow the progress of a product or an industry and add feedback or rate of service. This provides valuable information in the supply chain 
on how we can improve our products, make them more relevant and add value to satisfy our customers. Positive feedback can give the supply chain, supply chain confidence that, it's, that their service is hitting the mark. Conventional grocery shopping, I think, is changing. Um, with some of the, the forward thinkers earlier on today, um, it's hard to know where it's going to end, but for me, I think we need to embrace a new connected world and strap on for the ride and just look forward to the opportunities that it presents. Thank you.